The cremaster muscle, a muscle that covers and suspends the testis, is unique to the male human body. Its function is to lower and raise the testis in reaction to certain physiological factors. For example, when a man enters an environment with a rather cold temperature, the cremaster muscle contracts, raising the testes nice and snug to get some body heat. This muscle also contracts in reaction to fight or flight situations. For example, when a man has to fight or run away from a threat, the cremaster muscle contracts, pulling the testis close to the body to protect it. Interestingly enough, the cremaster muscle also reacts when the medial aspect of the thigh is stroked or touched, causing the testis of the side to be retracted. This is known as the cremaster reflex. My question for you today is, what do you think might be causing this to occur and why might this reflex be important in clinical practice? If you're intrigued to find out the answer to this, why not stay with me now? because the answer lies within the subject material for today's tutorial on the lumbar plexus. Okay, so what will we actually learn in this tutorial? Let me just give you a quick overview. We'll start with defining what exactly is the lumbar plexus and what it does. We'll then look at its origin off the spinal cord and what nerves are formed from it. We'll then move on to look at the structures supplied by these nerves and the course that they take to get there. There's quite a lot of variation, so we'll discuss that too, where appropriate, and of course, we'll top it off with some related clinical notes right at the end. So the lumbar plexus is one of the four spinal nerve plexuses found in the body. While the part lumbar quite clearly indicates its location in the lumbar region, you might wonder what a nerve plexus actually is. So think of it like a little electrical distribution board or network that receives cables or wires, which represent spinal nerves. It reorganizes and combines their fibers into wires, which then come out of the network to travel to their corresponding areas of the body. But back to the lumbar plexus. It is formed by, you guessed it, the lumbar spinal nerves. To be more specific, it is formed by the anterior rami of the L1 to L4 spinal nerves. Just in case you've forgotten what I mean by the term anterior rami, let me quickly refresh your memory. As each spinal nerve leaves the vertebral canal, it divides into an anterior and posterior ramus. The posterior rami of the spinal nerves generally innervate the skin and muscles of the back with the anterior rami contributing to the spinal plexuses. The main function of the lumbar plexus is to innervate the lower abdominal wall, certain muscles of the hip and thigh, and designated areas of the skin of the lower limb. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.